It's a beautiful day. That's got me thinking about jumping in the pool. Oh, that water's still a little chilly. You know what? That makes me think about one of the classic questions that comes up when we're talking about heat, thermal energy, temperature. What do you think has more thermal energy? This blazing hot cup of coffee right here, or that pool behind me? Think about it. Hey, let's dive in and see if we can figure it out. Now, I know what a lot of you are probably thinking. Well, just get a thermometer and figure out the answer. Let's give it a try. So there's the temperature of our pool. Let me go grab the coffee cup. And there's the temperature of our coffee cup. So the coffee cup has more thermal energy, right? Wrong. Wait a minute. Maybe we need to pause here and figure out what is the difference between temperature and thermal energy. Now, before you can understand this idea of temperature and thermal energy, you've got to understand what's called the particle theory of matter. It's actually really simple. It basically says everything's made up of little tiny pieces. Okay, so sort of like Legos. Lots of little tiny pieces make up the whole thing. In the same way, my coffee, there's lots of little tiny particles that make up the liquid called coffee. Now today, to make it easy to visualize, I'm using ping pong balls for my particles. Obviously way, way, way bigger than the particles would actually be. Here's the other thing that you need to know about these particles. They are always in constant motion. Sometimes moving slowly, sometimes moving very fast. And the faster the particles move, the more kinetic energy they have. And the more kinetic energy, the hotter they feel. So here's the crazy thing. Next time you touch something that's hot, instead of saying, ouch, that's hot, say, ouch, that's fast. Because fast moving particles is what makes something hot. Kind of weird, huh? So now you're ready to understand what temperature actually is. <laughs> temperature is the average kinetic energy of the particles in a sample of matter. Okay, wait a minute, that sounds like really scientific-y. Let's break that down into simple language. So imagine, I take all of those particles out of my coffee cup, and I spread them out here, and I give each one a number that represents its individual, specific, kinetic, that's its moving, energy. As you can see, the kinetic energy of each particle is slightly different. The temperature is the average, also known as the arithmetic mean. It's sort of the number that's in the middle of all the different numbers. Now, how do you actually figure that out? Well, it's pretty simple. You just add up each particular number, and then you divide by how many different particles you have. And the answer is 175. So now that you know what temperature is, what is this thermal energy thing? Well, the thermal energy is just the total of all of the kinetic energies of all of the particles. So you just add them all together. So what's the total of all of these kinetic energies? And the answer is 1,225, the total kinetic energy of this sample. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the thermal energy. So let me go back and ask you my original question again now. Which has more thermal energy, the cup of coffee or the pool? Think about it. All right, now let's talk about that pool. Now we know, because we used the thermometer, that the average kinetic energy in the pool was 75.9 degrees. What does that mean? It means some particles were moving faster, some were moving slower, but the number that's about in the middle of all of those different amounts of kinetic energy would be 75.9.
Now, what would we need to know in order to calculate the thermal energy of the pool? Well, if I had seven particles in my coffee, how many of these particles do you think would fit in that pool? Well, there's got to be, there's got to be a better way. Maybe we can use math to solve this problem. All right, so let's see if we can go ahead and figure this out the mathematical way. The pool behind me holds 3,900 gallons of water. It takes 11 of my coffee cups to fill up one gallon. Do the multiplication, that's 42,900 coffee cups to fill this pool. But remember, each of my coffee cups held seven particles. So we multiply by seven, we have 300,300 particles. You know, those little ping pong balls that would fit in this pool. But we're still not done because we have to remember that each individual particle has its own kinetic energy. We were using the temperature, 75.9, as our reference point for the kinetic energy. So we have to multiply the 300,300 particles by 75.9. Our grand total for thermal energy, 22,792,770. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a lot of thermal energy. So I don't have to ask you anymore whether the cup of coffee or the pool has more thermal energy. Maybe a better question is, can you explain why the pool has so much more thermal energy even though it has a lower temperature? Think about that. Have a great day and as always, stay curious my friends.